teams have been running this Lich versus it seems like the other scenes are neglecting it a little bit. To be honest, I think Lich is kind of good here, but uh, teams doesn't know that you can just pick Ench or Chen. Maybe they doesn't play it, but Chen and Ench is great counter to Lich, and basically if you draft Ench or Chen, you will win easily. Leash, but still some teams is not comfortable of picking it and basically they just ban same for P, despite the fact that they are playing Ench and Chen. I think uh, Solo told me this is just annoying hero for them and they just don't want to think about it and try to counter draft it and stuff. They're gonna just ban it and it's fine for them. It's probably a, it's a comfort thing as well for LFI, right? Just because they've been doing so well with it, you take it away rather than just trying to attempt to deal with it. And uh, segueing onto that, Sumil, LFI have chosen DP second. It's a little bit weird to just immediately pick your core role, but I noticed especially that both LGD and LFY squads, they're really comfortable picking their cores a lot early on. Like, do you see any uh, weaknesses in this? I think it's a pretty big like uh, flaw in draft, in my opinion, that you show your position like ASAP, unless they want to put offlane deep or something and like just trick them and sure. put something else mid. But I, I don't like the cores first two that much, unless it's like super broken, which might be because like super, He's like a really average player, but when he's on his heroes and he's feeling it, he's like he do, he does pretty well. So, I think if if he wanted DP and he's like I'm yeah I'm just gonna do well, then I think it's a fine pick. Okay, keep your eyes on that. You've got DDC of course on your screens currently, as well. We're seeing him fill that position five. So they've got Void and Sand King. These these two have been like kind of staples of patch upon patch at this point in time. I mean. Uh, is there a real kind of safety net? Do you think? Would you describe these as safe, Sumail, just seeing a Sand King and a Void? Yes. Uh, then again, Sand King is like a multi-role hero, right? Yeah. And uh, Void, he can be also a multi-role. So, like the big thing about Void is he's always good in patch because of his ultimate and how like his laning works. He's a really safe off laner to put in. Like you can just throw him out there. He might get something. He might not get something. But he, he won't feed, and then he has a big impact with his ultimate all game. Same with Sand King. All he needs is a blink, and once he's off the map, he's like super scary here to play against. I'm intrigued to know uh, just how, what on earth has possessed people to not only ban Magi, ban Sniper, and ban Chen. I think Sniper is pretty good against Death Prophet because Death Prophet can easily go into Sniper. You have to buy Blink or something, mm -hmm. and it's pretty annoying. Also, Sniper is a great liner against DP because Shrapnel is destroys sure. DP. Movement speed of DP is really low. So that's why they banned it, and really good ban Chen, because VP, is they like to run Chen with Sand King. It's like they're the best combo. Yeah. I mean, we saw what VP, or rather we saw what Lil could do, didn't we, Blitz, with uh, when he's given those extra creeps. Yeah, and especially uh, something that you brought up that we also noticed on Planet Out throughout the year, we were wondering how do we make this Chen hero work, because obviously Misery has a really good Chen, and we noticed just stealing data from people, we said Sand King is the hero that enables this because especially if you're in the off lane, you can shove this lane in and you can create these dives that happen and you can immediately take that safe lane tower and just put so much pressure on the map. Yeah, and basically you just take a little corner of the map, of enemy map, and just out farm them. You don't need to rush sometimes onto high ground because sometimes people just pick Kotals, Viren and stuff and you can just go high ground and you just farm and win the game by farm. It's a whole map. You see DP actually does show that We've seen no one on it as well. This time he's going to be laning against it potentially. When the you Warlock? How, I don't think we've seen too much of the Warlock in the draft so far in TI7. I don't really understand the pick, to be honest. Okay. I think they're just overdoing the team fight a lot. And maybe it's fine, who knows? But I just don't like it that much for now. What, what you would you have rather seen in this place? More of like a lane secure for safe lane. Okay. I guess he's kind of a lane secure, but I think there's like. like Focusing too much on like team fight, like the big dark system. Somebody once did tell me though that at a TI, at other events, you can get away with split push, but at TI, you always have to show up to fight. There's going to be a point in the game where you have to get into a five on five fight to break spirits. Uh, what do you think about that? Wait, are you suggesting there's a TI meta? I think there is. I, I think there is, because like uh, the flashy players, they're not scared to play the map like if you're. Fearlessly, like yeah, if they're in like some small tournament, but if they're at TI, they're gonna like think about it. If I get ganked, what, what gonna what's gonna happen? Like so much on the line, so, so everything changes. You second guess yourself. Yeah, so then everything just like revolves around team fights and who has the better team fight because you want to be like grouped up and you just like you're so scared of losing and you just want to be grouped up and the stake fights and stuff. Yeah. It's all. I mean, it's we say. I'm not gonna say it's all a mental game, but there is so much going on outside of the hands on the keyboard and mouse. I, I think yeah, in TI, especially at TI, like uh. It's 90% mental game, and if you like, if you're f prepared for it, like, it's super easy to win TI because every team, like, 
just their performance rate like drops down drastically. Like it's actually insane how worse everyone gets at TI. Yeah, of course. Uh, you were in this position, FNG, where you were the underdog going into uh, that game against Secret, yep. where and you were telling me that you didn't really have anything to lose. You thought we can just play for fun, and that kind of just removed the pressure from you. Uh, I mean, after first game when we drafted really bad heroes, yeah. we decided yeah. like, okay, draft our heroes, and for some reason Secret left that hero for us, so, like Visage draw and stuff, and we won the game, and it was like, what? What happened? We just played good Dota. But uh, this is the question, right? The attitude you must have had in that was. We lost. Nothing to lose. We yeah. lost. We've lost. Right, we've lost already. Let's have some fun, right? And as soon as the fun is re-injected back into the game, suddenly, you know, success is attached to it. Yeah, kind of. Looking forward to seeing. So basically, we've, we've learned a lot throughout this panel, but one of them is just don't choke. Have fun. Games are for fun at the end of the day. Also 24 million, but we'll, we'll uh, talk about that later. Fun. I'm really surprised that Shaker is not peaked and not banned. Yeah. Batrider gone last. Ember as well. Because it's really like meta hero, and I believe both teams has a good players on it. But so, Blitz, if I asked you to summarize the, the styles of which we're going to be seeing from the VP and LFY, how would you do so? I mean, LFY have to play a very split push game and gather up whenever their DP ult is up. It's really hard for them, though, to deal with a lot of VP's heroes. Like, I don't know if they have enough lane shove. Like, if you look at their heroes, the only hero that can really split the map is Morph. And even then, he needs a lot of items to do so. So, so far, even though Virtus Pro might have invested a lot in a team fight, I think they can shove the lanes easier, and therefore it's easier for them to make plays. Ten seconds remaining. I think LFI is going for like early, super early game, because I think they can pressure way more than Virtus Pro can. And once they hit their timings, I think it's really hard for them to deal with the morph lane, because they don't really, they have real bad heroes for smoking, uh, other than Void, I think. So if this Void doesn't get too much, he has to be safe lane in this case, because if he doesn't get that much, I think he's going to be in a bad spot. I mean, I guess they have So are so you suggesting that it's kind of put a bit of a time limit on the game? I think so, because I think Dari scale, or L5 scales way better than Radiant does. Okay. What do you take as the mid hero then? If you're if you're in this position right now and you're, you have the entire map ahead of you and that's why uh, they decided to save this pick for last, you see five different heroes, what do you decide that you want to carry this game? I think Invoker can work because the L5 does not have like many natural BKB buyers and I think Invoker shines in those scenarios and they have like a lot of team fight to like help Invoker and like a lot of setup for him to like be online as soon as possible. Getting to hear inside your head is, is a real adventure, especially when, you know, this is the draft. This is for no one. This is going in his hands. 38 seconds and they are not rushing this one. FNG, anything to add to the, the pile of where no one's going to be taking this one? OD. Oh, we've seen a lot of OD from him in the past. Would you, that's like a com would you call that comfort comfortable for no one? Yeah, for sure. I mean, even for Virtus Pro overall, yeah. it's like OD can easily win the game by himself, but still he needs a lot of help here because Earth Spirit and DP are pretty strong lane. They're going right down to the last second with this one. I think it's uh, not the ideal OD can look at Ursa. So. Oh, sir. Say yes, Ursa. Say yes, Ursa. Well, we've got it locked in. The draft is there. Do we feel like there is... Yeah, I have a clear draft favored here. Then I'll start with you, Blitz, just to be quick. Uh, I think that VP should be able to Roshan at a pretty reasonable pace. I feel like Ursa was a little bit out of left field, but I think they can push the map a little bit further than LFY can. So I'm going to go with VP for game one. OK, VP for game one. VP. VP. L what a surprise. And one for LFY as well. All right, then. Key Arena, let's make some noise as we welcome our casters and celebrate the start of another battle. This time it's LFY versus Virtus Pro. Let's raise the decibel levels. It's your casters. I could definitely help with the decibel rating. We are going to go up already. Virtus Pro have taken out one LGD team. But now they face up against the Forever Young team. The team who looked amazing through group stage. 2-0 through the quarterfinals. What's in store for us this game, Sin? Oh, there's a lot of things to talk about. This is a matchup I was looking forward to a lot. It's probably my, my favorite game of the day. Um, Virtus Pro looked really scary against LGD, and LFY has been my tournament favorite after we saw the groups play out. Just uh, the way they played, they really were extremely impressive. Uh, so what I was thinking going into this matchup was, okay, how did VP beat LGD? They played really fast, really aggressive, took advantage of the slow build-up time that LGD had as a team, and I thought, maybe VP are going to bring the same to the table here. LFY is a team that has a tendency of losing their lanes a bit and then playing a strong mid-game. Uh, and maybe VP would just come rushing at them in the laning stage. It looks like that's some of the idea they have here with this Darkseer plus melee cores that they just want to fight, 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 like we saw IG do earlier. 
uh, in one of the games against Newbie. Uh, and LFY have more of their standard stuff here. So, yeah, it's going to be a, a really interesting game. I think, uh, I think it's a hard one to call. Sumail rightfully pointed out this is an incredible Morphling game. So Virtus Pro are maybe on a bit of a clock. Yeah, and that's where they look to see the timing of the Ursa. But you, you were talking about, like, you rush them in the laning phase. Virtus Pro as well as FY have uh, these heroes that kind of maybe want to wait a little bit longer. So maybe the battle will be happening a little bit later, but Virtus Pro can help step that up by running this aggressive kind of lane. Afu very wisely moving away. He has an Observer and a Sentry he's looking to try and plant out. But Ramses, Lil, and Solo are all grouping up around this top. And it looks like they are going to come over to try and contest up LFY's rune. If the Morphling is a great game for him, shut down his lane. Three heroes will come up to contest it, and they will be successful at doing it. So three bounty runes go the way of Virtus Pro at the start. Something to note, by the way, that happened during the draft was that uh, Virtus Pro, for the longest time possible, as it looked, had no one on the Darkseer and Pasha on the Void. And it may have tricked LFY a little bit and given them a little less time to prepare, and then they swapped later on and, of course, put Pasha on his signature Darkseer. Since Pasha plays both heroes, maybe they would have believed that, okay, maybe no one also plays Darkseer. We haven't really seen it run. Maybe they would put it mid against Death Prophet. Not the case. It is the standard Void mid for uh, no one that he has played before in this tournament. And as for Super, he's playing on one of his absolute best heroes, Death Prophet. This seems like such a hard lane for either team to gank up. No one's got time walk to get away. Super, he'll need his level 2 for it, but the Spirit Siphon can be there for the Death Prophet. So difficult to gank, but it's not stopping Lil from being more of a nuisance. Both teams, the panel talking about this earlier in the day, how many couriers have we actually seen SWAT actually sniped out? We got a lane camera up right now to check out all the lanes, but at this rate, the very start, you may as well have courier cams both going at the same time. But Lil rotating in towards mid, he won't find Super. Hello. He'll give up the fight. The second he shows himself, the courier will leave the base. Is coming with the south. A little bit of harass here, but Super's not going to be too phased by this. Oh, wow. Actually, top lane, Tidehunter, you're really low. Ramsey's, where's that rolling ball to forward? Space, it's not created enough. Solo, it actually be the kill for him. Ramsey still wants the damage into Afu. Solo. Doesn't actually have the range anymore to stand underneath that tier 1 tower, but Virtus Pro getting up in the face of LFY's safe lane successfully. I'd say this is one of Ramsey's best heroes, and perhaps relative to like the rest of the competitive field, his standout hero is the Ursa. Um, it's, been, it's become a Virtus Pro classic to run, and whenever they identify that there's a very good lane matchup for Ramsey's, they're not scared of picking up this Ursa. And that is one of the absolute best heroes you can have in lane against Tidehunter. This lane sucks, man. It's really, really weak LFY safe lane. And as mentioned before, maybe that's the way you approach this team, is that you try to beat them out very hard in lane. And, and then in addition to that, in this game, VP have doubled down on team fight, So they can also like progress from that laning stage into beating LFY at their game later, which, in my opinion, has been the standout playstyle for LFY, is these team fights past minute 15, where they just play incredibly around each other. But if, you're, <laughs> if there's enough team fight on the enemy team, it's not that easy. And regeneration room for no one. His to stay in the middle lane's fantastic against Super. And you're talking about this aggressive lane, like VP can start the rotations. Is there a way that LFY can move earlier? We've currently committed D, uh, DDC with Monet on this bottom lane to try and battle against Pasha, but they're not really intimidating him much. It seems to be more of just a straight up farm lane. Is this really the way LFY's lane should work out? I don't really think they have that many heroes that are good against Darkseer early on. He's going to have a good game here, Pasha. And uh, LFY are probably just thinking more about how do we enable, uh, how do we enable our Morphling and DP as much as possible, and then Tide will be a sacrifice in this game. They they can't have all three lanes go well with the uh, heroes that they're facing, so they got to take what they can get top lane again now. Ramses, yeah, look at him open up. Afu creates a little bit of space with a rock kick, but it's so hard to walk away that upheaval is making it impossible. Ramses' damage output is lower thanks to the anchor smash, but Lil does not care when Burrow Strike is available. 2-0 start to Virtus Pro, exactly where they wanted to be with 1k up lead. Yeah, it's, it's going to be really, really difficult for Inflame to have a game here. I'm, I'm curious if they just decide at some point, you know what, uh, we don't even bother. Leave this lane dead and try to focus on somewhere else, but that's kind of part of the genius of this mid lane uh, Faceless Void is that that's a really bad hero for Earth Spirit to try to gank. Sure, they can try to connect it with the DP sounds, but there's no way they're going to kill this guy. And then you want to run the Darkseer. Pasha just sits back behind the tower and yeah. spams out Iron Shells defensively, wasting more time. It's very difficult for LFY to find openings, so I think they're just going to need to try to farm as much as they can. DPC trying to snipe some trees there. He got one. 
I'll take the bounty rune at least and also see that the bottom rune is invisibility. This could be an opening perhaps, but again, where does he go? Maybe he takes this one and TP's top and they try to connect? Nope, it's actually Earth for TP back to base. It's like if they could pressure mid, but like they can't really even do that until they have a silence available. And that's not something a super wants to really skill up. He's going for a 2 0 3 and more than likely wants to have exorcism at 6. Well, we're going to see what he chooses to do. We have seen Silent skill fairly early in some situations. But Maybe they go bottom lane. That is where they had a bit of Lil. That's Maybe their feeling this rotation already. Moving over. Pasha getting aggressive onto Monet. Pasha still keeping that burn going. DDT reveals himself to pick up a throw down with the waveform. They have the damage output. Lil will get the Barra Strike as Morphling. Strength morphs up and has four one charges to live. So he will be fine. Nice bait from Monet. It's one of those moments as the Dark Seer you're like... How stupid is he? Is he really doing this? Like, I'm, I'm having a great time trading with this guy. I have Iron Shell on myself, and, and Lil is coming in. That's why this worked so well, was that Lil actually wanted to go for the kill down there, so they really wanted to bait themselves. And it's about who are the better baiters, and that was LFY in this instance. They get that kill. Yep. That helps them just repair a little bit of the gold advantage that Virtus Pro's picked up. It's now taking the aggression off the Tidehunter, so more space for that offlane. Or I should say safe lane of LFY. There's going to be some swap around here. They'll pit the Ursa against Morphling. That is also, I would say, a pretty good lane matchup for the Ursa until Morphling is very strong. But that's not the case at all yet. They can also feel confident about their other lanes. The fact that no one's running the mid means you've got a Chronosphere very early on. So if LFY want to pressure bottom lane, if they want to pressure Ramses, it won't take that much to bring in the Faceless Void and vice versa. You can't, how can you kill the mid when you've got Chronosphere and a level 3 time walk available? It really is not possible. But Afu, he'll start with a kick onto Ramses, pick up Telekinesis, no TP support coming in just yet. Now it's on the way. It's the Faceless Void we're talking about. The lead forward, a three-man Chrono, but he's already lost Ramses. Support's not there. Warlock is on his Way, trying to focus on the DDC and let's get something, but no one is a one on three matchup. Solo will come in, gives the Shadow Word as well as the slow upheaval is down. So Manet doesn't want to use waveform. Lil's coming in with Lil and Lil looking for DDC. They'll surround him on three sides. The kick comes forward, only connects on the illusion. Solo moving forward as well. He needs to keep his distance now. It's Lil who's very low. The Sand King will fall. DDC trying to run back to the tower. The Illusions are going to break off the attack. They're coming down towards Afu, but Monet's not done just yet. Going after no one. He's got the Shadow Word for regeneration, but this SK Illusion, it finds Afu, but still on 40 HP. That is enough to stay alive as the Earth Spirit. Yeah, the Fairy Fire stays alive because of that on that Earth Spirit. It's an item we don't really see used that much anymore, but it has its moments just like that one. Earth Spirit is one of the better heroes to use Fairy Fire because it very naturally commits in and wants to trade for as long as possible. And then just at the end of that, when he was about to die, he does have that ace up his sleeve to get out of there. Very nice place here overall from LFY, forcing that rotation from Void, getting a zero impact chrono. They got half a tower mid with Death Prophet ultimate at the same time, and they freed up, freed up their Tidehunter up top, who is now going to be able to play some Dota soon. We'll be looking forward to that. Gets a soul ring, so farming is now secured for him. And also is level six, the other big team fight controller. You can talk about the faces void having the chronosphere for no one. He needs a follow-up. The other counterpart to kind of make VP's combination work a little bit better is levels onto solo. He's on this bottom lane now, sitting down here with Ramses, but both of them don't have that level six. You don't have enrage, you don't have the rock drop. It'll be coming in, in due time. Uh, the hero of VP to always look out for in these games, I think. Pasha is a... Oh, wait a second, like bottom lane? Um, yeah, they're pushing thing. him back behind the tower. Solo's still nearby, but he doesn't have a lot of mana to work with. I want to I wanna keep an eye on Pasha in this game as well. I think he is outstanding on Darkseer, and the reason Virtus Pro plays so well with this hero is they're very, very good at combining uh, their spell casting in all of their games. And Darkseer is one of those heroes that really allows your lineup to really gravitate toward one point and and take a very, very nice fight together. So I, I, I've seen this hero banned against Virtus Pro for the last few months in most of their games, and they're very happy to grab it for Pasha in this situation. Getting good levels and good farm on this hero is generally a good indication that Virtus Pro are, are in a position to, at the very least, take fights later. The question is if they can win them, but they'll definitely be able to, to take them whenever they want. And you see LFY's reaction with their vision. You're talking about VP taking a great fight. It's the vision game from LFY. The Observe Ward is sitting on the radiant high ground side of mid lane. 
It saw the rotation of Lil running under, the, under that haste rune. Same with the Observe Ward just south of that bottom rune area. LFY are able to read where VP's movements are, and they're giving them no option to fight. And if there is an option to fight, LFY will come in with the numbers. And they're doing it again. Super, the numbers are here. Bottom lane, Exorcism is up. Super is looking for some good damage towards the tower, doing it with the Morphling. There's one way to do it. And Solo is not ready to fight. He's got level two upheaval. He can at least slow down LFY. Super, he's backing out now. There's the upheaval. A little bit of a slow. Virus trying to go to work. Ramsey just going to try and slice and dice. But Lil, so much damage from Verne. Waving forward. Ramsey is too injured. The Chronosphere. He'll create space. Shadow Word on the Ramsey. He's getting his life back right now. But Chronosphere has been expended. And VP have no other choice but to run away. Monet has himself a waveform. But VP have already left the bottom tier one tower. And they don't want a bar of this. This tower is difficult to defend. I think this is case in point. Also, in addition to that, you know, the Ravage is available. Darkseer, I was saying, is going to allow them to fight whenever they want. This is still maybe a little bit too early. <laughs> you want to have Vacuum and the point wall. So they still need a little bit of build up time. I didn't think we were going to see them attempt to take a fight this early on. And LFY are taking full advantage of this little spike they have. So for Virtus Pro, the challenge here is buy enough time to get Darkseer's levels, get that mechanism up and running, and get Warlock level 6. And then this kind of fight is one they're definitely going to be able to take. But VP supports. This is pretty unusual for them. Both of them are only sitting on level 4 here at 10 minutes. There will be a Tome, of course. Guessing it goes to Solo, arguably more important than getting the levels on the Sand King. They need that rock. If you are gonna if you are gonna play it around the dogs here, you're gonna need that rock. It's also when Ramsey wants to try and push forward. We can look towards Roshan as, as a primary thing. They are running the Earth of Warrior, so it goes hand in hand. It'll be a priority target for Virtus Pro. But so far, it's LFY who are adding the adding the force. They're coming down to the mid lane. Only a half HP tower with a catapult wave and even DDC having the end of a double damage rune. Okay, a little bit harder than getting close solo. He's just sitting with the level <laughs> two up. He will to hit the tower. Now, finally, a if, you've never, if you've never played this game before and you're wondering what that red ring on the ground is, it's annoying. That's what it is. It's really annoying. The, the new name of the uh, of the ability. Yeah. I, I would say it's upheaval, but it's more up something else. It's currently sitting on level two, annoying. And there goes the tower to LFY. Yep. Keeping the pressure on. And very good read on this game from them so far. I think they're playing. Oh, rolling ball. It goes well. forward. They're kicking Solo back. A quick styles. He's still got the Shadow Word on top of himself and the pickup from Rubik. DDC going to pull him in and drop him down. You have Exorcism off cooldown in five seconds' time. You still have Tidehunter Ravage. And with no Chrono for 13 seconds, LFY could have forced the issue. But instead, they'll back out. There's so much space being created for the Morphling this way as well. The, the hero is not particularly strong in lane against a lot of matchups, but LFY managed to secure himself him the farm in the off lane first, and then they've been moving him around, and they've been playing around him for kills. He's 2-0-2. Oh, Oftentimes we see Morphling be involved in absolutely nothing for the first 20 minutes, but this is something I think LFY is very, very good at, is using every player in the game. They have some games where it's impossible, like where the hero is just too weak. But if they have any sort of strength, they try to draw as much as possible out of every player. And now they're just going to claim themselves another tower. VP actually might want to try There's this time around. There's that first VP coming in, Fates is Void. He is waiting. It's actually Ramsey's coming in first. Three swans into Monet, one chance will repair all of that damage. And now, here's your Chronosphere, catching three. Super on the edge of it, the first strike right for the rock will drop, and the Fatal Bonds connecting up LFY. Three heroes caught inside of it, they're already killing the Rubik. Monet, they're trying to run out, but again, it is unfair advantage when the slow is just making it impossible to run away. Tidehunter crippled and brought down the top lane. LFY lose three, and Virtus Pro, they now turn their attention towards Roshan, but Monet, he's walking in front of the pit, the VP will still be fine. They're going to keep going at this. That's that first team fight for Virtus Pro that was so important to be successful, and they pull it off very nicely there with a uh, freight chrono into Golem. Well, he's in the neighborhood. Monet's there. They're going to pick up from DDC. They'll drop him down. Roshan almost down, is down now. Ramses has the Aegis the Immortal. But do you want this fight? You don't have rock available, so really the answer is no. A bar strike, which was stolen from DDC, cancels the TP out from Pasha. He'll end up dying. He has the mech and the headdress, but still short of the mech. Sorry, he has the buckler in the headdress. Needs a little bit more. Another 700 to go, but this was two, uh, two very good minutes for Virtus Pro. They end up having a couple casualties there, but I think they're happy overall getting the team fight first and then the Aegis. Sitting with that on Ursa, closing in on Blink Dagger is going to allow them to play the style that they really like. Um, 
I think Ramses as a player is has a lot of faith in his team. He trusts them a lot when he's given the Aegis, not scared of just going in extremely aggressively and burning that Aegis to set up his teammates. So Blink Dagger will definitely be preparing Virtus Pro for their next fight. Now he has about three minutes to get that realistically to have the fight with the Aegis as well. And that's just a 200 GPM, should be absolutely no problem for him to get that in time to use it with the Aegis. Yeah, and they're actually giving him all of the jungle. They'll give him the Ancients as well. So there is the space for him to find that. And they are starting to pump out more and more damage for this pro. Double Mask of Madness. It's a little bit more of a risky thing to do, but you've got to face this Void and an Ursa who are holding onto these two items. And LFY, well, maybe they can stop Ramdes. That Observer was watching him. Watching him regenerate up all of the mana. They'll know he's farming, and that's what they hear to stop. The smoke can break on Arfu. They realize that Ramses will be to the north, and Ramses can he get himself away. The kick comes through. You commit the excess of TP supports coming in. It's the faceless void. There's no Chrono. There's no Rock just yet. And it's just a call to let Ursa die. Aegis Immortal is gone. Pasha's nearby. Lil coming over from the left side. Both strikes off the Esperus. There's no quick kick, and the upheaval slowing down Super. Exism is still only halfway through its duration. Tide comes in as well. They rolling Boulder forward. So Forced to run away now. The magnetizer just turned on. Face boy is still here. Chronosphere is up. The bar strike from Lil. May as well bigger ravage under Lil and Super. Keeping them out of this fight. Now the ravage will pop. Faceless boy. Silas up and can't do anything. He'll fall before the Chrono is able to be expended. 40 seconds on the sideline with no buyback. And they burn the Aegis the Immortal. A perfect fight for LFY. Yeah, they didn't want to give Ramses the chance to to get prepared with the Blink Dagger just immediately. You'll see very few teams in this tournament do this. The Aegis just went the other way. <laughs> They're like, we don't care. You know, see him on a ward. Sh they see that the Shrine gets used, which is very good information for them to take the fight in this area. BP can't really retreat up to the Shrine and get an advantage. So uh, LFY, by coming from the high ground around this uh, camp that the Ursa is farming, already have the natural positioning advantage. And then when BP try to respond, they're just not ready yet. Yeah, we can see that fight once more. This is when it was get really kicking off in the mid lane. That silence, the follow-up Ravage, there was just nothing the Faceless Void can do. So I, I'm imagining BP will try to go back the other way just now. They, they have all of their spells ready now. Finally, Darkseer levels up the wall at level 11. They have Chrono, they have the Chaotic Offering prepared as well. Lil still 300 short of the Blink Dagger and doesn't have Epicenter skilled yet, so maybe that's something we're he waiting for, but he showed though. himself for a moment. So smart from Lil, he understood he was going to be attacked, and this is LFY who have understood the item timings of Virtus Pro, their farm position they should be in, and who they have to pressure. It's the double Blink Daggers they're trying to stop. The one from Ursa, that one's already up, but now it's Lil, 100 gold away from completing it. They're just playing very, very aggressively with what they have. Even the Morphling is joining for these moves, and now he's going to go top. That was the end of that. He still has a Replicate hanging around if they want to make a move somewhere. It's actually moving in toward mid. Is that other timer? To bait Rams they oh actually got a Chrono no! in. No one! He's literally hit nothing! It was a Replicate bait! And LFY! They have just dodged a huge thing. The Morphling was probably headed up north to try and dodge the combination of Virtus Pro. They had Chronosphere. They had the Chaotic Offering. They were looking for a fight. They wanted to pinpoint it around that Tier 1 tower. And LFY, with one thing that was only made of water, have drowned the hopes of VP for that fight, at least. Yeah, he just bought them two minutes. That's the easiest way of, of looking at oh, that. Oh, no, this is cruel. This is mercy on replay. Why are we getting a slow-mo of oh, this? Oh, guys! <laughs> <laughs> just really slow-mo so you can really tell how he's hitting that illusion. Yeah, you know that open wound that you can just pour salt into? That's, that's basically what just happened there. Oh, man. That's rough. Oh. But what you, so what you need to do as Virtus Pro right now is that you need to realize, all right, mistakes happen. Don't get to uh, don't get tilted basically from a move like this. It is frustrating. They were ready to fight, as you said. They wanted to take this opportunity. Now you need to not get into this mode of all right. We still have to fight. We still have to fight. Yep. Your lineup is fine in two minutes as well. It's not the end of the world. You missed a core kill that could have been interesting and maybe given you a tower, but the same opportunity or a similar one will present itself soon, and that's what they need to get ready for. The Sand King Blink is now complete. He has the epicenter available as well. We'll be getting his little four burrow strike. So peak timing for Virtus Pro's absolutely monstrous team fight is coming now. Yeah. The question is if they can land it into LFY's line. It, it is one of those things too the uh, the panel was talking about. The fact that VP have maybe gone a little bit over in.
for the team fight means they've always got something else up their sleeve. So Faces Void misses the Chronosphere, but a Darkseer vac into a big Burrow Strike is not something we've like we're uncommon with during this TI. We've seen it many, many times. Then you've got the Warlock Rock, and there's so much damage output, which is still in the bank for Virtus Pro. Chronosphere or not, miss one of the abilities. As long as two or three of them connect, LFY are gonna have a really, really hard time having the fight. For now, they're not going to be obliging, Virtus Pro. LFY will be able to take that bottom tower. Exism is triggered. They are not going to fight into this. They want pick first or have that ulti down. That is a uh, oh, mid lane. They nice find Ramses. There's a replicate. Yeah, this one. It now turns into the real Monet. They actually wind up and earns up. The damage was quick, but not quick enough when DDZ is there to hold him with a telekinesis. I think maybe we haven't talked enough about the weaknesses of Virtus Pro's lineup. So they have excellent team fight, of course, but they're not that good at hitting buildings, and that means Ursa gets himself into awkward positions like this, trying to pressure lanes. And in addition to that, their skirmish power is very, very like it's it's Sand King centric. If until the Sand King had his blink dagger, it's difficult for Virtus Pro to find kills with like two heroes most of the time, unless they want to commit big ultimates. That's why they're looking for these big team fights. And LFY can just position themselves in a way where Morphling is pushing a lane. How are you going to kill Morphling with this lineup, like the the Virtus Pro lineup? You need to commit three or four ultimates and be a lot of heroes there at the uh, same time. Oh. You are on the wrong side of the river. I know you had a mission while you were here. It's oh, nice little back lane with a back from Pasha pulling out for back in to the unbelievable slow of the upheaval. And did he even get, he didn't even get an Observer Ward down, so he was just having a bit of a wander around, having a poke. And in, oh, that's rage. Oh, it's just farming agents. Yeah, so in addition to uh, to this ability of the Morphling to just split split apart the map and make it difficult for his pro to find the fight, when they finally get something they want to fight, they always need to have Tidehunter in the back of their minds. I think this this pick from Eloquai in this game, apart from the laning where he has a struggle against Ursa, is, it's maybe a bit of a stroke of genius, just the idea of, well, the enemy team has team fight. We get one team fighter who is just as much counter initiate as he is initiate, so we can set the terms of the fight. If they want to go into our DP, they need to worry constantly that this Tidehunter can just flank with his mech and his Ravage and turn the fight around. Yep. So the, the conditions for VP to set up a good fight become a lot harder to find. And then there's just that clock. The Morphling is ticking all the time. So VP have to be getting a little bit stressed out, I think, about this map. Now you're actually seeing their item builds, and maybe this is their way to deal with a Tidehunter. Tidehunter doesn't really have that big a mana pool. 225 mana for both Ravage as well as the mech out of a 776 mana pool. You're getting two Diffusal Blades being built. One on the Faceless Void, the other is on the Ursa. In fact, they're almost mirroring their builds apart from the fact that Void doesn't have a Blink Dagger just yet. It's also an absolutely key item for their heroes to be able to stand a chance of killing Morphling. If they can burn his mana, he can't get the Morph off. And then uh, a hero like Void will probably go both Diffusal and Manta here. It actually looks like uh, no one has to be be queued up, but I think he wants a Manta as well, so he can Chrono the Morphling and burn all that mana really fast. But for now, it's not going to be a possibility. Um, Roshan's up. Yep. That is the next objective for sure for Virtus Pro. And I don't. I think LFY want to fight for it. They're not going to give this one for free, I believe. Ramsey is jumping in. Right now, the Earth Spirit Replicate Maybe. is sitting at the front of the pit. It's not seeing inside, but thanks to that Observer Ward from the Dire side, it sees the entire smoke of Virtus Pro. So LFY have all the information behind the lines. So they put Tide front lines. Make sure he's visible. They are a little bit more grouped up and bringing Ancients along with them. Roshan I got that. Ashes on the Earth, so the Chrono Spear is down. Let's put the fight up. Murray, the blanket from the Tide Hunter. Roshan, it was snatched. The Aegis Immortal into the hands of Mone. It's a huge, huge fight. running away from this fight. The rock created space and ends up being a two-for-one trade-off, but the Aegis Immortal is still in the hands of Monet. Thanks, Roshan, says Monet. I hope we get a replay of that. That's one of those heartbreaking moments for, for Ramses. Just like, you know what? Game doesn't like me today. Like, what, what are you going to do? He actually uses Enrage, he eats one more hit on the Rosh, and then he gets bashed. I think we're going to see it here. So, there we go. And Monet to just now he gets stunned. It. Very nicely played by Monet as well, getting that adaptive strike off to steal the Aegis and Cheese. He got both. And Ramses gets killed off as well. Committing that enrage to try to finish off the Roshan means he has nothing defensive left in the tank. 
And BP com combining all of those ultimates, what did they find? Did they find two support kills? Yep. I think that was it. But the two support kills were done because of the Chronosphere that came from no one. He split the fight out, but the rest of LFY already got themselves into the perfect position. Now they're going for more. It's Solo, the man to create that space. He will have to sacrifice his life in the mid-river. E-Blade is 200 gold away now for Monet. And there are targets in this game that die in, in that shotgun. He can one-shot the Warlock. Unless he buys himself up a cloak, I think. The Sand King is very susceptible as well. Um, they do have a couple of raindrops running. Maybe he can't take them from 100 to 0, but combining with any ally, I think they could kill any hero on the map. This is dangerous. Lil is trying to cut the wave mid. He might regret this. Has to blink away here. Got silenced, but did take damage. And... Oh! It's there in time, actually dodging the kick. So Lil will fall while that was going on. Faceless Void just got soloed up. The E-Blade first pop was Monet picking off the mid of Virtus Pro. This has escalated very quickly for LFY. The Roshan, the only thing that keeps the golden experience a little bit intact uh, after that was the fact that they did, Virtus Pro, get the kill onto Roshan, even if they didn't have the Aegis, the Immortal. And this, then everyone uh, was backed up and started farming. This situation that just happened reminded me of something I gave LFY a lot of praise for during the group stage was that I think this team, better than anyone else in this tournament, are very good at allocating their resources correctly. They're sending the correct amount of heroes to the, to the skirmishes or team fights that they need. When they pushed the tier 1 top earlier, Earth Spirit was still bottom. They felt like, we don't need this guy. We'll get more out of the map by keeping him somewhere else. This time, we send Morphling top. He will combat this void while we go for the Sand King at the same time. And then when you play effectively around the map like that, you build a serious advantage in terms of numbers in a lot of situations. And you can just outmaneuver your opponents while oh, you're playing really, really well this game. This tower's gone, and then we'll see what's next on the menu. Maybe they get the tier 2 mid as well. I mean, why not? They have the Aegis and Cheese on Mark. Who's going to stop this guy? It's the last out of tower. And more and more towers they take outside the base, the more VP is restricted in the space they can farm. They're already falling well behind that highest net worth of 14.6k is the Morphling. The nearest on the Radiant side, look towards the Ursa, just shine the 11k, and then Warlock. Okay. Okay. It wasn't a straight up one kill with a double blast shotgun. He had to waveform it as well, but the job is done. Warlock is down for 23 seconds, and that's a window of opportunity. LFY wants a jar open. And they will keep Inflame far away on the right here. So he has Blink and Mech on Tide. And the only thing that's important to him is that he doesn't get Chrono. All right, maybe okay, he doesn't he just jumps straight in. Hey, you know, why not? No, th this is just too juicy, though. Like, no one wants to go, but without the Warlock Fatal Bonds, they won't have enough damage split across LFY to kill them off. And I think it's something VP definitely understand. They're all grouped up. They want the Chrono before it's the time. Now the time is there, but you just lost the SK. Killed off. The Chrono is nice. Here comes your Ravage. It creates more space back again. They hold him in position. The back rock. But GG gets called from no one. They don't even let the fight end. It is done and dusted. LFY. Taking game one against Virtus Pro. Yeah, they uh, a little bit of a flashback to a lot of the games you saw in the group stage. Yeah, I think so. What Virtus Pro want to do against this team is beat them in lanes, and they tried to set up the the lanes that they felt like they could win, but they never really built a big advantage. And then LFY takes some makes some better moves, better rotations, and very quickly, just a couple of key moments give them a. A huge advantage and you know a lot of other teams in this situation might not call gg like vp did but i i'm with them i think this game is over yep. might as well not you know get let it get to you too much you have a best of three go to next game revise your ideas a bit and and prepare for the second one it's also winner bracket there is a second life if everything goes wrong for them yeah this is actually the point where lfy has to be careful too Voters pro they can be dangerous when they're down and out but They've still got that extra game up their sleeve. Potentially they can fight back against LFY, but LFY is showing that spark, that flair, that safety that came from their group stage performance. The reason why everyone was saying that LFY, the ones that belong in that grand final, they already managed to two out TNC. They're on, on track to do the same thing, maybe, against Virtus Pro. But Virtus Pro, they'll recover, they'll think about it.
And maybe they are the team to do it. Maybe they are the team that can find that aggressive kind of strategy. The thing that can just shake LFY a little bit. TNC found a little bit of, of it. Even if though it was a 2-0 result, it wasn't a very clean game for LFY. Can VP find that same flair? I think the, the part of their idea that is correct is the heavy lane focus and the focus on putting pressure on LFY. Don't play slow. Try to play fast and find kills. But in this game, they overcompensate on team fight. I think Samael hit the nail on the head on the panel there. It's like, this is too much, man. This is too much of the same thing. And LFY play the skirmish game instead. I think LFY uh, or VP, a little more skirmish focus, less team fight focus, and just look at that fast-paced early game. Well, let's see what they come up with. Game one does go the way of LFY. Game two is anyone's. Nail on the head. Yes, indeed, LFY do hammer that nail home. First of the series under their belt and the chance I could hear them from over here. So that's a testament to the fandom that's going on in the arena. For now, though, I'm joined by once again, Sumail, Blitz, and none other than previous Virtus Pro player, FN Jesus. How do you feel about FN Jesus? I, I feel like no, it rolls off the Just FNG, please. Fine. Fine. Nice. Okay, gentlemen, there is a lot to be discussed here because I think the first question I'm throwing in your way, Sumail, is a discussion everyone was starting to have, which was just... Virtus Pro's early game, are they early game reliant? It's something we always talk about, like good start, start strong. What did you make of this one? I think most of the teams who are individually talented, they rely a lot on their early game because if they make mistakes, they lose their confidence and they, they are just thinking about, during the mid game, they're just thinking about like, we could have done this better and everything would have been like way easier for us from that. And like VP is a really individual, like individually sure. skilled team. And I think that's their, one of the biggest uh, advantage, I think the early game, because if they get it, like they go, Real good from that, because they're. I mean, the CIS teams are known to like just run at yeah. you, and they're really good at it. But I think this game, this focus way more on team fights, which is kind of their like uh, strand, but not really, because I, I think it's like messed up. They got too. So kind of confused. Yeah. Maybe even in the draft itself. Now, I'll go over to UFNG because the discussion that a lot of people were having was that just they. They didn't have enough damage. I mean, you had kind of that void looking a little lost in mid. Ursa as well, you said it was signature VP Ursa. I mean, the problem is they put no one's on void, and I don't think that's a good idea because, I mean, he's a good at he this hero, but he's not comfortable enough, and I don't think that this fits uh, Virtus Pro play style because he just sits at mid lane farm, and then he can kill anyone because he needs another hero. Mid uh, no one's just like to rush at people, have dominance, have a lot of farm, and just kill people. Yeah. And I mean, Void, that's not the hero. And we talk about comfort. This was something we talked about in the pre-match. We said, you know, Samel said it himself, being comfortable is important at TI, being confident and comfortable. And there is no one more confident and comfortable at that Telestrator than Purge. Kevin, what have you got for us this time? Well, uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about the lane setup um, that ended up providing uh, that beautiful game we just watched. Now, like you guys said, there was a Void in the mid lane, kind of a weird matchup. Uh, surprisingly, no one was able to keep his farm towards the top of the charts, which I thought was very impressive. But the interesting matchup, I believe, was actually the Ursa versus Tidehunter one. This is the last pick that VP went with, very common pick for them. But what it gave them was a much better laning stage, more so than before. Now, the really cool thing that uh, Ramses did here is right before his Fury Swipe counter that he had previously stacked up was gone from Tidehunter, he strolls right in and gets a third one there, which allows him to get this overwhelming damage. So he was able to abuse the hero to get some good lane advantage. That went well. The, the rest of the lanes for VP went pretty darn well. But the problem really started coming when the, the Chronospheres misfired. There was a couple in team fights that produced decent outcomes, but not amazing. And obviously the big chrono on the uh, Morphling Replicate gives LFY another big advantage. If you if you run a carry like Faces Void or a hero like Faces Void in the mid lane, you need to get kills with these teamfight ultimates. Because if you don't, it gives your opponents these big advantages where they can actually do things. And in the meantime, we're about 22 minutes in the game. LFY has about 2k gold advantage. It's good, but not completely overwhelming. But really it comes down to how close these team fights are. Now, the, the crucial moment was Monet here stunning and pushing the Ursa back at the same moment that he moved in to grab the Aegis. And because he did that, it pretty much guarantees that VP is going to lose this fight. I mean, there was a good Chronosphere that hits the back line as well, but in the meantime, Super is able to zone um, the the other back line. And unfortunately, because Solo got pushed so far back, he's not able to affect the fight in the perfect way. And just always felt like VP was constantly on the back foot in the team fights. Perfect stuff once again. Purge, master of his craft. Now we get to kind of talk a little bit about why LFY were so masterful in their first game. Uh, thanks very much, dude. Appreciate it. Uh, I think the most, the biggest discussion I want to have, and Blitz, we haven't heard from you yet, is actually more about what's happening to that sixth man. We saw the, that shot of the team, right? You saw Virtus Pro having that breakdown between the series, and Artstyle was someone that was talking an awful lot. If you're in a position like that, if you've got, you know, the boys from Planet Odd hanging out with you, what words are exchanged? <laughs> I don't know why you're looking at me like that, Savelle. <laughs> uh, Curious. 
I, I would say that it's not a big deal. You have to remember that it all boils down. You can reset yourself and say, it's a best of one. It's not the worst thing in the world that you lost this game. You can make the adjustments. And that's what the coach is there for, right? You make the key adjustments that allow you to pick yourself up. Because in that series, I think when you do that Ursa last pick, whatever your last pick is, especially if you save it as a core, you have to be thinking to yourself as a captain or as a coach, you're thinking to yourself, that hero has to win us the game. Like this hero has to bring the entire draft together and we had some good suggestions. We had OD, we had Invoker. I was like, these heroes can win the game no matter what happens. But then they picked Ursa. Mm. And I'm sure uh, Art Style was also very confused. He's like, why is that an Ursa pick? They have no damage. They can't really properly abuse this Chronosphere. And so it's about him saying, OK, guys, you were probably a little bit too heavy on one side. Let's dial it back a little bit. Let's make sure that if our last pick is a core, that it's going to be a little bit more effective than that. OK, now just kind of this is where I'm going to ask to pick your brain a little bit more on an intricate level. You said to me about seven or eight minutes into it when we were watching, just you can tell that no one was uncomfortable on Void. Now, what, what were you picking up that I wasn't? I think, I mean, I'm, I wasn't like really looking at the game or anything, but yeah. it's just like I saw that he's playing Void for some reason. And I don't think that's a good sign because if your mid player is like as aggressive as no one, and like these players, they just want to be able to like get enough farm, then they can like solo, keep getting these solo pickoffs. But as a Void, he doesn't have enough damage and he can't do that which makes his game very difficult to play because all the mid players want to do is like they just want to go in and like get kills and just create a space but on this on like in this game like he couldn't do it at all i think like which got him like i kind of tilted because sure. like even though he wasted chrono if he was focused fully like he could see that his smoke didn't pop before he chrono the replicate like very small, small, small details that can go ahead and define a game. And indeed, that game has been won by LFY. Before we turn our attention to game two of the series, and as this battle for upper bracket success continues, we're going to take a look at some more of these fantastic submissions for the film contest.